No one could have imagined that when the tabernacle was finally built and inaugurated, that anything could go wrong, but something did. Shalom, my friends. This is the Kiva Gersh with Israel in 5, where we give you everything Israel in 5 minutes. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or want to keep the conversation going, please do so in the comments. This week's Torah portion is called Shmini, which means eight. After learning so much about the construction of the tabernacle and the sacrifices that are brought there, we learn about the inauguration of the tabernacle. It wasn't that it was just built and now they start using it. There was a whole week-long inauguration process and ceremony that was led by Moses before it was officially put into use. And after this incredible moment, inc incredible week, and, and God's presence is, is felt um, and perceived in their tabernacle, then two of the sons of Aaron, Moses' brother, Nadav and Avihu, they come in and they're so excited, they're so passionate, they're so inspired by what's going on, the tabernacle and God's presence in the tabernacle, and they bring fire offerings of their own in order to, to show and to express their love and their excitement and their passion and their desire to connect so deeply to God. But nobody asked them to bring this. Nobody instructed them. God didn't ask them. God did not instruct them to bring these sacrifices. They brought these offerings on their own, which on one side is, is very nice. It shows how much they personally wanted to be part of the experience and connect and to express their love and devotion to God. But at the same time, the tabernacle was built in such a specific way with such specific rules and laws that needed to be followed. And Adav and Avihu, unfortunately, kind of broke out of that realm, out of that um, mold, so to speak, of these certain ways of doing things in the tabernacle and with the tabernacle. And as a result, they were struck down. They were struck down. They died on the spot where they brought these offerings. And there's an incredible lesson here, right? On one level, we don't judge Nadav and Avihu because we see the, the, the beautiful aspect inside of what they were doing and what they wanted to do and what they wanted to achieve, which was just longing and yearning for God. And at the same time, we learn an essential lesson for our lives, which is that we live in a, in a, in a world. We live in a world of rules and of, and of boundaries and of ways of doing things, especially when it comes to religious ritual and practice. And the Davin of you broke out of that. And, and I think we can say that God was, was using them to teach a lesson to the entire nation. I, I don't think God hated the Davin of you. I don't think God, you know, uh, was angry at them in the, in the traditional sense of, of, of being angry. But the lesson did need to be taught. And the nation did need to understand that while the tabernacle was this immensely beautiful and, and holy place and space for the nation to come and to connect, there were certain rules and there were certain laws and those needed to be followed. And in Dav and Navi were, were used as an example to show that to the nation, right? I think in addition to that, we can say that in the Dav and Navi, they were so excited, they were so on fire, so to speak, with their love and passion for God, that they were willing to give up their lives. Really, that's what we learned from the, from the commentators, that they just wanted to be so close to God, they wanted to cleave to God and just leave this world behind. That they didn't care if they were going to die. Right? Maybe on some level they knew they were going to die. Right? And they didn't care, it didn't matter to them because all that mattered to them was being close to God. And if that meant dying as a result, they were okay with it. And again, God comes and teaches a lesson. He says, no, I want you here in this world. Yes, I want you to cling to me. Yes, I want you to believe in me and, and think of me and, and, and bring my presence into this world, but I want you to stay in this world. You are a physical being with a, a soul, of course, right? and to be led by that soul, but you're a, a physical being in a physical world, and that's where I want you to be. That's where I want you to say, that's the that's where you're going to do the work that I brought you into this world to do. Right? Not you know leaving this world and breaking through all the boundaries and, and returning to the realm of, of pure soul. No, I want you to be here. The tabernacle is a physical structure. So physical human beings, right, the physical nation can do physical rituals in order to connect spiritually, in order to connect um, to God, in order to bring God's presence into this world and to fuse the physicality with, spiritual, uh, with, with spirituality, right? But it can't happen if you leave this world. It can't happen if you go beyond. 
It can't happen if you jump out of your body, so to speak, and want to return to the spiritual realm completely. And these are the lessons that we're learning from this very, very interesting and unique story uh, happening right after the, the inauguration uh, of, the, of the tabernacle. And this is a lesson that we can take into our lives, that we're here to be physical beings in a physical world doing physical things and to infuse it with spirituality and with holiness.